Big news of the day, Texas A&M has hired TCU's Jim Schlossnagel to be the Aggies next head baseball coach. Schlossnagel comes to Aggie land after 18 seasons at TCU where he guided the Horned Frogs to the College World Series five times during a stretch of 15 NCAA tournament appearances. A max capacity crowd on hand today to watch Texas A&M officially announce Jim Schlossnagel as its new head baseball coach. My job with the players is to give them the best chance to, to have success. That's simply, to me, what a leader is, is, is you put people in the best position to have success, you help them be, to become the very best version of themselves, and when we all do that, then the, the results on the baseball field will take care of itself. But we are gonna do it the right way. We are going to do it the right way. There are no shortcuts to anything great, and anything worth having takes a lot of work, and it doesn't happen overnight but understand that as soon as, as soon as it can possibly happen, it will. The goal was a national title, that's it. There will never be a day where the goal was anything less than that. Get ready, we're coming. The veteran coach had stepped out of the comfort zone that 18 successful seasons at one school can provide. He wasn't looking for comfort though. He was in search of a challenge and for new heights at A&M. At 50 years old, I was kind of itching uh, to be a part of a transformation of a program one more time. And the beauty of Texas A&M was that both personally and professionally, it was a perfect fit for what I was kind of anxious to do. And then the opportunity to coach, not just in the best baseball conference, but the best division of the best baseball conference against the SEC West. Just for me personally in my own career, before I finished coaching, I wanted to say, that I had competed against the very best coaches, the very best players in the biggest environments with the most on the line. This opportunity, it came at the perfect time and uh, I felt like I needed to take advantage of it. Uh, I'd always heard about Coach and I've had some former teammates and friends of mine play for him and I just they just said nothing but good things and I knew what I was getting with him. I was getting a winner and a guy that just is really passionate about what he does. When he got here, I think the first day, like I knew immediately that that hey, this is going to be a good change for a and baseball. Like everything that I would want in a coach, like he has. But a new era began with growing pains. The first few weeks of the season were anything but easy. In the early early weeks, it was there was lots of ups and downs. Full count pitch on its way, swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Penn will win it two to one over the Aggies here at Olson Field at Bluebell Park. Lost some close games to. Penn, got walked off by Wichita State in Frisco. Yeah, they were tough just because we knew who we were as a team. We knew we weren't where we wanted to be. I mean, for the most part, you know, it, it sucked. I mean, you know, you had to stay off social media for a little bit. You couldn't really go on there. Um, just from, you know, the outside noise that you, you had to basically just tune out. 3-2 pitch, skied. This should be it. Houston wins 8-2 to two over the Aggies on a Tuesday night. Uh, it, I mean, it was pretty normal speech after uh, a loss like that. We thought we were going to get chewed out, but uh, he just walked in and said, have y'all ever had a Pringle? So Shalash is just genuine. He, he just says what he feels, and his analogy that day was Pringles. If you eat one Pringle, you're going to eat really the whole can. Like, you, this, you can't stop. You can't just have one. And he said, when you get one win, you need another, and you need another, and you need another. That was it. Like, hey guys, we need to be more desperate to win. We're about to go to LSU, and you better figure it out quick. A&M was headed to LSU to start SEC play. Their coach had said his piece after the Houston game. This team received that message loud and clear. Mike Dallas, my roommate, one of my all-time best friends, he grabs a Pringles can into the dugout, and he brings it in. And of course, when coach asked about Pringles, he looked at Targosh and Tar, you know, being the dude he is, he hits a home run. Micah brings out the Pringles can and just feeds him a Pringle. And I, yeah, if you want to credit our season to Pringles, I mean, <laughs> I think you're, I think you're spot on. LSU was ranked eighth when the Aggies took two of three from them and Baton Rouge. Just a week and a half later, rival Texas was number eight when A&M entered Dish Falk Field in Austin at the end of March. Not only would A&M face a daunting Longhorn lineup. A hostile environment greeted them as well. It was, without a doubt, the most hostile environment we'd been to. The manager! They're getting after the manager! I really feel like the first game where we found out who we were 
and how we could play for each other and our, our identity uh, was that Texas game. There was so much happening and so many guys were making plays and so much, so many guys were getting hits. One of the most fun games to watch and I was just looking throughout the team, the next guy wanted to step up and like Moss hit a, the cycle and then the next guy wanted to come up and like, all right, you hit the cycle, I'm gonna hit a home run right here. It just was infectious and it felt like everyone wanted to one-up each other and just, it was so much fun. Uh, that's that's really where it felt like we have some special and we were all just playing for each other It didn't matter who got the spotlight didn't matter who was going in the pitch didn't matter who was going up to hit Everyone just wanted everyone else to succeed. And we're all playing for each other the three two again In there strike three call And the Aggies have won the game The top had been popped the Aggies were hungry for more than just one win. The can had been opened for a successful run moving forward. That seven series stretch that we went through was probably some of the most fun baseball I've ever played. Fly ball, right center field, going back, still going back, gone! Troy Clutch, Olsen Magic! Our offense had a real identity of what what I envision the perfect offense to be. And during that whole run, that's, that was the feeling that I feel like everyone had. No matter who's out there, yeah, everyone else has their back. And that's how we knew we had something special. Clutch with the bat flip to center field. Get out of here. We knew that we had what it took. We knew we had the right guys. We knew we had the right coaches. We knew we had the right mentality. So we were out to prove ourselves right. Having won back-to-back -back SEC series, Arkansas came to Bluebell Park for a set beginning April 19th. The third-ranked Razorbacks' visit meant the Aggies would have to be sharp to stay hot. I think one of the biggest confidence boosters for our team was that weekend and just showing that we could hang with anybody and we could beat anybody in the country. Shot through the 5-6 hole. Rounding third, coming home rock. The throw to the plate. Not in time! Ground ball to second. Targotch flip. Kaler one. Relay double play. 2-2. Two -two. Rock hits a long fly deep left. Goodbye. Over the scoreboard, Dylan Rock. Fly ball center field. Logan Britt coming on. Aggies win 11 to 10. Jacob Polish, what a save. And the Aggies take the series from Arkansas. Two games to one. We're just a resilient group of guys that bought into a process and bought into a mentality that, you know, we're not going down easy. And Texas A&M takes two out of three, defeating Vanderbilt 12 to four. Held on at first is Britt, 1-0. Minnick fly ball center field, Stone drifting back, still going back, he's still going back, it's gone! Brett Minnick, <laughs> Olsen Magic, the two oh. win 13 to 12. Are you kidding me, Brad Minnick? Ball game over. Aggies complete the series sweep. They've won three in a row, seven of eight. And they're now 15 and four in their last 19. They take the finale, eight to two. We started playing team baseball. We started playing team baseball for each other, pitch to pitch, moment to moment, and we just didn't let anything get in our way. Six consecutive series wins sent A&M to Oxford with their sights set on a championship. A&M faced Ole Miss with a chance to claim the SEC West title. No matter what everyone was saying, uh, we knew who we were and we just trusted the process the whole way through. 2-1 pitch hit high and deep to left. That ball is gone and Texas A&M is on the board first. Dylan Rock with his 14th home run of the season to put the Aggies in front, two zip. With the breaking ball, got a swing and a miss, a big strikeout. Ole Miss strands a couple. This ball hit high and deep. McCants going back to the wall, and that is gone. Jack Moss off the batter's eye, hits his sixth home run of the year. This ball hit high to right field. Calvin Harris gets to the warning track, and that ball is gone. Second home run of the night for Dylan Rock. Texas A&M goes back to back, and now they've got a five-run lead. 
Calvin Harris goes down swinging, and Texas A&M takes game number one. You know, I and obviously everyone else who came here, you know, had the intentions of doing some really special things in year one. It wasn't a rebuild year in our eyes. Um, like, everybody kind of wrote us off, and I think we just came together over that. We came together over being the underdogs. We were all kind of misfits in our own way. And that ball is gone to straightaway center field, a three-run home run for Dylan Rock. High game, 5-5. A&M has out hit Ole Miss 8-5 today. The 1-2. Lifted to left. Kevin Graham on the run, gets to the track, reaches up. That is a grand slam for Brett Minnick. And a monster inning for Texas A&M. And he hits it right to the third baseman, Werner. To second for one, to first for a double play. Full count pitch. Fly ball to left, Kevin Graham going to watch this one leave the yard as Jordan Thompson goes deep. We all just kind of gelled over our own adversities and kind of our own stories, and I think that's what made us so special, and, you know, getting that final out and catching that ball from Tar. Fielded by Targotch, throws over, Texas A&M wins the series, and they win the SEC Western Division. To be SEC West champions, to prove ourselves right, I think it, it was big. Um, we did what a lot of people thought we couldn't do, and we did what we thought we could do. I remember just that Saturday night taking everybody to dinner and just sitting back and watching the sunset in the square of Oxford and enjoying a championship. That was kind of a big proving point for us, and I think it's, it just sets the stage for this program moving forward. The postseason was upon Aggieland. The road to Omaha started in College Station. The Aggies hadn't hosted a regional game since 2016. The excitement of playing at home was heightened when learning of a potential matchup with Coach Sloss Nagel's former school, TCU. Yeah, you know, I knew when I left TCU that the way the NCAA selection process works, they, things tend to stay regional, and, and uh, I think God has a sense of humor, too. Howdy, Ags, and welcome to the corner of Bush and Olsen. And the road to Omaha begins here. It's the Aggies and the Oral Roberts Golden Eagles. Here's the pitch. Fly ball to left field and hit well. Cox at the wall. JT is just giving the Aggies a 2-1 lead with the two-run home run to left. Into right center field by Moss, shopping at the gap. Here comes Thompson. Here comes Werner. Aggies lead 8-2 to two on the two-run double. Aggies take game one of this regional 8-2 to two over Oral Roberts. It is a gorgeous night here at College Station, Texas, as we get set for our nightcap of day number two. A couple of unbeatens from Bluebell Park, Texas A&M, and the Raging Cajuns from Louisiana. Ground ball right side. That one sneaks through. One run is in. They're going to send Clouch, and he'll make it safely. Four, nothing, Aggies. That ball is absolutely torched. The Aggies have the lead at eight to six. Well, that was a strike that was blistered out to right. Is it deep enough? It is. Cole Kaler with his third of the year. And this one is in the books. Nine, six, Aggies win it. After beating Oral Roberts, then Louisiana, the championship round matchup with the Horned Frogs materialized. Mixed emotions, no, no question. Um, I'd be lying if it was different. And I didn't want to be a part of ending their season, but it's also baseball. We have reached the regional final at Texas A&M 2-0, taking on TCU. Out to center field, that's gonna drop in for a base hit. One run will score, they will stay loaded, and we are tied at three, and Werner finally gets the big base knock. Hammer, deep to center field. That one is off the batter's eye, a three-run homer, and one up. That one is shot out to right. That'll get one run home. That'll get two runs home. That's through the left side. Rock turns the corner. He will score. It's 15 to 9. Ground ball. Targotch makes the play, and this one is over. 
regional champs, but the work wasn't done. The Super Regional was coming College Station's way too. A&M stood a couple wins from college baseball's promised land. The Super Regional is is almost harder than the World Series because like it's only it's two teams and you'll do whatever it takes to win. I've been a part of so many where it's just including against Texas A&M where every single pitch has so much weighing on it and Louisville had an unbelievable season, crazy talented team like a lot of future big leaguers on that club. Going to the ninth, game one was hanging in the balance, tied 4-4. It was going to take a bit of magic. I'd faced the guy my at-bat prior, so I was really comfortable. I think I had a long at-bat, and I think I ended up walking. So I'd seen everything he'd thrown, and uh, luckily he hit Tar on a first pitch breaking ball. And so in my mind, I'm like, well, I'm getting a fastball. There's, there's no way he's throwing me anything else. They've got him loaded, and here's their leader, Troy Klotsch. Lines in right field, base hit! Texas A&M wins! One win down over the cards. One win to go. Another hot one. A quick turn, like we said, setting up game two here at Bluebell Park. A&M serving as the road team against Louisville. This is oh Hammer. Boy. Left center field. Tie ball game. Ryan Targotch, hello. He lines it toward the cap in right center field. Werner bolts for third. Moss stings another. A&M's got him at the quarters. Payoff pitch. Rock in the air to shallow center. Usher with a strong arm. Werner tags. Usher's throw does not get him. The Aggies lead. The drama was just as thick in game two. To the ninth inning again. The Aggies up a run and a Cardinal runner on and no outs. The atmosphere was full of tension. Jim Schlossnagel made a pitching change with a full count. I got called in to the game in a little bit of an interesting situation and a 3-2 count. I had pitched decent the night before, but I didn't feel like I was on top of my, my game. And, you know, coaches called on me again the next day. And, you know, if, if the coach is putting you in the game, that means they think you're the right person for that job. Two outs, two strikes, man at second. One, two. Cut on and missed! The Aggies are headed to Omaha! Honestly, I've never been more terrified to catch a baseball in my entire life. It never really clicks until that final out. Just look around and, and like, hey, I'm going to soak this all in because not everybody gets to experience this. There is a sense of, holy cow, we just survived that. And now we're going to the, you know, the pearly gates of, of college baseball. And, and then so seeing a guys go to the College World Series who've never been there before, who've only seen it on TV, uh, and watching their reaction and have, being a part of their experience, that's what is, is, is the most fun. Jim Sloshnagel was making his seventh appearance in the College World Series as a coach. A&M was making its seventh trip there in program history. You can't breathe the air in Omaha without exhaling a sense of hope into baseball's purest of atmospheres. It was crazy. It was just, a, I guess, a full circle life moment. You know, I, I think I've been going since I was nine years old, and when you hear you know, Carl Ravitch and Eduardo Perez calling your games, like, it, it didn't really feel real, and like saying your name as you step into the batter's box. You know, that's every kid's dream when they're growing up, is to go to Omaha. Yeah, for me, having been there seven times, I mean, it, there, there weren't really any emotions once the game, once we got to the game, the first game against Oklahoma. Uh, it's more about the opening ceremonies, the practice day, and also seeing, you know, the 12th man there, and seeing the fan base excited, and the fan base re-energized, and, you know, knowing that in my press conference I popped off about Omaha and the national championship being a goal and you know we're, we're, that's never not going to be the goal and all those things I said and and to see that come to fruition um, and and really again see it through the eyes of other people. 
In past years, though, Omaha had thrown up a roadblock on the Aggies. They hadn't won there since 1993. When Oklahoma beat A&M 13-8 in the opening game, it was the program's ninth straight CWS defeat. You know, you get to that point, you're playing the best top eight teams in the nation. And after we lost against OU, Coach Sloss, you know, kind of called us in. We had a team meeting, and he just said, hey, we're going to go on one, one game win streaks. And so that was kind of our uh, mantra going into the next couple of games, was one game win streaks. Don't let the Aggies get hot. Two days later, the 374th matchup all time between Texas A&M and the rival Texas, but the first ever in Omaha. At stake, the sweetest of victories, but at risk, the most sour of defeats. One of them would continue on the greatest stage in the college game while booting an old nemesis right off it. It's 3-2 to Thompson. Served into shallow left field. Kennedy on, falls in front. Claunch coming home. The throw cut off. We're tied at two. The pitch from Gordon to center, left center field. It falls. Two runs, single by Werner. And the Aggies have their first lead, four to two. It was kind of back and forth for a little bit. And then we just kind of kept, kept going and kept pushing away from them. And by the end of it, it just kind of felt like we had I don't know, like suffocated him in a way. and But I felt like if we could just hang around, um, I knew Jacob and, and uh, the guys that we had available in that particular game, uh, I, I felt like we could stop them, especially in that ballpark. Here's the one-two pitch. Got him looking right down the heart of the plate. Struck out a big hitter in Ivan Melendez, and Texas will strand him loaded. Line down the left field. Just inside the line, into the corner. RBI double by Boast, his second double, and the Aggies lead 10 to two. There's a point in a, in a game, in a season, where a team just, hey man, this, is, this is, isn't our day, and I think maybe that was going on on the other side. The 1-0 to Todd. Fly ball, left field, Dylan Rock drifting back. He's under it. Aggies take the hordes down. 10 2. So long to the orange and the whites. The Aggies advance. Don't let us win one. Don't let the boys get hot. After notching the program's first CWS win in almost three decades and saying goodbye to Texas University. The Aggies faced another elimination test versus Notre Dame. Nathan Detmer, who faced his own trials in a tough luck outing in the Oklahoma loss four days prior, would step back to the hill against the Fighting Irish. I definitely wanted the ball. I, I really wanted to redeem myself and my teammates, and I knew that uh, if I got the ball, I wasn't gonna, it wasn't gonna waste it. And uh, I talked to Schloss that day, or the day before, and I just said, Whatever you need me, if you need me in the pen, if you need me to start a game, whatever you need me, I want to pitch again, I'm available. And he said, well, I'm, I'm going to need you to take the ball tomorrow. And I'm like, yes, sir, I, I love it. Let's do it. You know, everybody was kind of, from the outside, was kind of freaking out on him. But, you know, Dad is just the same cool, calm, collected guy. And I believed in him. We all believed in him. And, you know, when he believed in himself, you know, he's obviously done that all year. Um, you know, obviously really good things happen. So, 2-2. Curve, swing, and a miss. He struck him out. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. 0-2. Oh, Got him swing and a miss. Struck him out. Three pitches needed by Nathan Detmer for strikeout number six. Fly ball into shallow center field. Targotch is back in shallow center. Makes the grab, and the Aggies send the Golden Domers home, and they extend their stay here in Omaha with a 5-1 win over Notre Dame. The magic this team conjured at Olsen Field at Bluebell Park swept up Aggies and the 12th man everywhere and carried them deep into the bracket in Omaha. But game 11 on June 22nd is when they ran out. And heartbreak on the side of the Aggies who got to this point in thrilling fashion with quite a performance. Hats off to Texas A&M. Oklahoma topped A&M again, this time 5-1. to one. The run was over but the memories will remain. 119 Texas A&M baseball teams had taken the field before this season. None of them had advanced as far as the 2022 
Aggies. Can you put into words uh, what this year has meant for you and what the university means to both of you? No, <laughs> I can't. Um, it was a leap of faith for sure. And uh, just to have these guys uh, with me all year long for my last season, <laughs> couldn't have asked for anything more. So thank you. Who would have thought that the team that lost two out of three to Penn and then went to Frisco and lost two out of three there would be, you know, sweeping their way through the postseason on their way to the College World Series. Improbable in year one with that man at the helm. Look at what you guys accomplished. There's zero reason to hang your head. You're an epic team. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'll ever experience a team like that again. It was unbelievable and just a once in a lifetime experience. I can't thank everyone enough and I, I could sit here and and say thank you to a hundred different people individually. It meant the world to me. I couldn't be more appreciative. I couldn't be more thankful to have been around such a good group of guys, around a, such a good group of coaches. I just want to thank the whole 12th man and all the fans that came out to the games and supported us throughout the season. It was a great ride and it was something that I'll never forget. To this point, no other A&M team has trekked this far, but it feels like this program's journey to those new heights is only just beginning. To do something that nobody else has done is an honor, is something, you know, means you did something right. I hope that it's not the furthest that we go, you know what I mean? I hope that it's just the start. And with Coach Slosh and Coach Early and all the coaches that we have now, I just think that that's the beginning of what's gonna come. The newcomers really have to bring that culture back that that team had and try and spread it out throughout the whole team and so that we can make a run at it again. We know what it takes to get back there and how to be successful during the SEC, during the preseason, what it needs to look like in practices. So that's only gonna help us from here on out. When the day comes that we do win a national title, we'll be able to look back at that team and say, this is who set the standard. All, all of those kids are legends in my eyes in Aggie baseball history.